Hi Leo, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your January 2022 mid-month tarot reading. Thank you to all of you for your support. I hope you're off to a great start here in 2022. And if you're new here, welcome to you. I post new readings every Friday, then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, come back in a couple of days. We know tarot's for entertainment purposes. However, there are energies that can give us direction as well. Fridays I do a general reading, Mondays I do a different style every week. So today's reading will be a more detailed Celtic cross style reading. If you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. All right, what advice do you have for Leo? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What does Leo need to know, please, for the best and highest good of all concerned with Leo? Messages for Leo, please. Okay, I'm going to let that one. We had a jumper. We're going to let that come out. It's an interesting card to, to have as a jumper. I got just a little peek of it. Exciting, though. Okay, your current situation, you've got the Two of Swords. The immediate influence is the Nine of Pentacles. Your destiny position, you've got the Queen of Swords. You've got the King of Pentacles in the distant past, the Eight of Wands in the more recent past. The Wheel of Fortune is coming towards you. You're represented by the Four of Swords. The person or situation you're attracting is the Queen of Cups. You've got justice in your hopes and fears. The Fool and the Outcome, well, I like it. I like this a lot. Now, I'm going to pull two more cards from the bottom since you had one come out already. Well, let's see here. We had the Ace of Wands. So if you're feeling like, you know, if you're feeling like you can't get stuff done, you're going to be getting stuff done with this energy. You have here Libra. You've got all the fixed signs. You've got three major arcana here. You've got two queens. Queens are mastery of the suit. And the aces are all about new beginnings and initiation. So especially with the Wheel of Fortune, this jumping Ace of Wands and the Fool, you're at this jumping off point. You are at the precipice of something new, new energy, and it feels awesome. This is exciting. There's an excitement and an enthusiasm with this. So if things have been stagnant with the Two of Swords, you're getting removed from that, released from that, so you can move forward here. So the Queen of Wands in a relationship with the Ace of Wands would be very, very passionate kind of energy. I mean, she's got her legs apart intentionally, okay? It was drawn that way on purpose to indicate just a very passionate woman here. Um, but again, uh, tarot is genderless. I think we know that. But the energy is is one of real chemistry with somebody here. It's, if it's a new relationship, I feel like you've released all the resistance and that energy of the fool. You're curious about one another. You want to find out about one another. And there's no holding back. You know, there really is nothing here to stop you. That five of swords for some of you, it's activity, it's change. I feel like it's walking away from conflict. If you were in a relationship and you've had a hard time getting out of it with the Two of Swords or you've still got some connection with them, I feel like you may be at a turning point where that's just not going to continue. Um, because with the Five of Swords, I just see it as <clears throat> really not looking to settle the score, not looking to keep any kind of score here. So with this, um, if there's two with work and career, the Wands are excellent energies and you've got the card of luxury too here. So you've got nice stability with the career, money advancements, and all that enterprise and growth in the wands. So it's definitely a time of expansion for you, Leo, a time of moving forward here. So with the Two of Swords, Nine of Pentacles card here, again, I do feel like you're as you go into this new year, you're not going to keep toxicity around you. P old people who always, you know, they, they bring in some kind of limiting belief, and especially with the Queen of Swords, We'd say that's the destiny, but it's also your subconscious. We'll talk about that in a minute. They're not going to stay with you. I just don't see you keeping that around. I see you as taking inventory, taking stock of who's around you. Who do you feel good when you're around and moving forward with that. So with that two of swords, if there was something you didn't see, I think you're going to be seeing a lot more clearly now. You may have felt somewhat unsupported by somebody here. I keep getting that and I just don't see it as a continuation New year, new you, but we've got to change, right, to get into that new energy. So the queen, uh, the uh, nine of pentacles here, nines are all about attainment. This is the attainment of gold, of wealth. She's surrounded by these grape 
you know, these grape leaves, these grapes growing all around her, they signify abundance and prosperity. She, there's no lack here. She's full of life and richness and in terms of support, in terms of being involved with her community. So you may meet new people, and I'm going to tell you it's going to be out with the old, in with the new. New people that are more interesting, they're more supportive. They all work together for a common good. Uh, you don't have the card of the team necessarily here, but I do feel like you have more, there's more supportive energy coming in around you. Now with that nine of um, pentacles, it may be about something very specific, like as you get a new car, there's somebody who's jealous around you, right? And you cut them free. Or as you advance, you just feel like there's this sort of ceiling, this imposed ceiling by people around you. And again, you will walk free of that. Now we have to point out quickly before we go on, of course, we know the King of Pentacles also, okay, his gown is covered in these same grapes. And so you definitely have advancements and money and career coming in. So the Queen of Swords, you can call it your destiny or even your subconscious. It's all about cutting free anything that does not serve you. Very intellectual energy. Some of you might start leading a little bit more with your mind on some things. Um, and, and again, you know, not necessarily keeping people around because you go back a long time or things like that. It just really is, where is my life going? This is a very driven kind of energy. Um, she says what she means and she doesn't apologize for it. So with this, I do feel like it's an energy of advancement as well. Swords were nobility in the tarot. And so as the queen, she's mastery of the truth, mastery of courage, mastery of boldness in your life. It really is you having your own personal power, even though it's air energy. She's a very empowered energy, kind of a boss babe energy. Where you And with the queen of wands too, you'll get stuff done with the two of those together. They're sort of partners in crime. Um, they're your... Um, I was going to say Grace and Frankie or Frankie and Grace, you know, they're this sort of energy of moving forward no matter what. And so the King of Pentacles is in the distant past. You might have had a turn of events here that brought in nice stability in your life, money, um, gains here as well. It could have been somebody like just having a boss that's been really helpful to you or people along the way that were really helpful, even a college professor, even if it was a long time ago, um, using those those pearls of wisdom along the way. The King of Pentacles, though, it's mastery of the suit. So it's mastery of manifesting. Some of you may have been working on your your craft of manifesting since you were a teenager. I know I the first book I ever read was um, by Shakti Gawain, and it was I was seventeen. I mean, this was a long time ago. This is almost you know what um, thirty years ago, for, th over thirty years ago. And it was creative visualization. That thing has carried with me throughout my whole life over 30 years of using those um, those gifts. And so I feel like for you too, it's keeping that going, keeping that momentum of manifesting going. Now, this can be about your physical body. It's gaining strength. It's gaining momentum. And it's gaining control over your body, okay? If you felt like you were out of control for a while... Um, or had a lot of injuries from different things or just felt kind of sluggish, you get back into a position where you feel good physically. It's mind, body, spirit. But with this, you're empowered. Money, manifesting body, okay? So the Eight of Wands comes in and there's a change here in the more recent past. It, this can be braced for change, but eights are about vibration in the tarot. And this one's very positive. It's a change that brings in good information if for some of you, it can be a relationship that builds too. It can be meeting someone new if you met somebody recently. And with this kind of energy, it seems like things evolve very quickly. Things pick up quickly. And again, as you make some decisions to move forward with positive people, you get rid of the toxic, the small-minded, the people who live small. This creates more expansion. You, you won't be at a loss. You'll be at a gain. You'll meet more people. That, that are in the same direction as you, people who are supportive. There's a rhythm here. You're getting into rhythm. You're getting into flow in this energy. It is the arrows of love too. So again, for some of you, you may have a new love interest who shows up here or one that deepens a commitment that grows. Somebody who starts to get more definition around what they want in the relationship and communicates that with you. So the Wheel of Fortune, the Wheel of Life comes in. It always is moving in your favor. The Wheel of Fortune, it's never the Wheel of Misfortune. 
So it's unexpected turns of events, two times in a row here. And with the Wheel of Fortune, it's a portal into the divine, okay? But it's divinely guided. The word tarot is around the wheel. But if you start with each letter and go around and form a new word, it's the name of God in Hebrew. So they really do mean it as sacred divination. It's high vibrational energy. Again, you've got this Hermanubis, Hermes and Anubis, this little jackal, and the serpent too is also the waves indicate high vibration. So you're in the right time at the right place. Anybody that's doing a creative endeavor, you write a book or you're writing one or working on some kind of musical piece or something like that, or even art, I see that for somebody. You're going to meet people that say, hey, you should come to this group with me. And they're going to give you, they're going to help you open doors. They're going to connect you, network. There's something about networking here. And so even in a job too, there may be more connections. And it might not show up right away where you understand why is this connection important. Like you meet somebody and in three years from now, they call you about a job. Hey, we've got this job opening. So all the networking that you're doing is bringing you closer to more. Okay, that's what it's doing. It's connecting you even further into your heart's desires. So the Four of Cups comes in. Fours are all about classification and measurement. And so did I say Four of Cups? I meant Four of Swords. If I did, excuse me on that. Four of Swords comes in and it really is an energy of taking a break. So you've got all this high flying energy around you. I mean, it's like running to stand still kind of energy. So they're telling you, they're giving you advice. Now, also too with the tarot, you know, when you look at outcomes, they're telling you in the current situation with the energy as it is, you can use your conscious will and shift your energy. So if you don't like an outcome and you go, well, I don't, I don't like that one, then you shift it. You start to change your point of attraction. But with this, it's getting back to center because of all this movement and activity around you. To, for some, it can throw you out of alignment. So you get kind of caught up in this and it, and it's not always, you don't always have as much, um, like you don't stay in sync with source energy. So with this, this helps you be in sync. You take a break, you meditate, you quiet your mind. You may find that you have pockets of time where you prefer solitude and that's okay too. It's knocking the door will open, asking it is given. So you quiet your mind and then you see what you want as if you're living it through the first person, bringing in all those tones of reality as if you're already in the job, you're already in the marriage, the relationship, that house, that car that the Nine of Pentacles offers to you. And there it is. And that's how you create. So the Queen of Cups, we've got the Queen of Swords, Queen of Wands, and the Queen of Cups. She brings in a nice softening agent. This is the situation or person you're attracting. Very intuitive energy. So you may feel intuitively drawn to them. You may find if you haven't met them yet, or maybe you already have, that you feel like you've known each other forever because you have an energetic connection to one another. It's real love. It's mastery. So it's mastery of love in that really great life. It's an energy too where you're going to feel connected with your family. You're going to feel love for your family. And there may be more grace. You know, maybe you get, you have a situation where you haven't seen your family in a long time. And so you ignore some of those small things, the stuff that maybe used to bother you. It doesn't bother you as much in this energy. You're easier. The energy around you is easier. And it's like, you're just glad to be together. And so with the justice card here, justice comes in to bring in more order, wisdom, knowledge, and the truth. It's the absolute truth. And so in a new situation, you may be seeing it in a very truthful way, in a very honest way. Um, but it also, too, is a card of great integrity. So in relationships, you have integrity. You have loyalty that doesn't have an expiration date. You know, we don't like relationships where that changes and all of a sudden the person's not loyal anymore. So you may find that your communication is very direct. Um, but with this, it brings in equilibrium and balance as well. And so it's in some ways, it's the universe telling you, you get what you are, not what you want. And so if you say, well, God, I've been trying hard. I've been helping a lot of people, looking for that break, looking for that opportunity, just looking for the shift. And here it comes. And the universe says, I see you. And I know that yeah, that's true. I feel it too, because the universe feels your energy. So the fool we love, the fool is... And there's nothing off limits for you here. It's the beginner's mind, though. So, again, I mentioned in relationships, it may be something new where you're very curious about each other, wanting to learn about each other. 
on a job too. You may have something new that comes in that gives you an opportunity to learn more. But you've got this guide dog here, so you can't get off the path too far. You've got this guidance coming in and giving you some direction, but it is a card of a quest. It's a card of excitement, adventure, enthusiasm. It's a brand new clean slate. It's a fresh beginning for you, and it's a great way to go into 2022. Pure potential, full of potential. So let's see here, Leo, what the angels have to say for you. But really beautiful reading with both the Wheel of Fortune and the Fool. It's like fortunate events are going to be aligning for you. Some of you too, it can be unexpected money as well. All right, so we have here, ask your angels, ask and they will tell you, Leo. If you believe, ask, believe, receive, and be assertive. You guys get that so much. Um, you've got perfect timing. And you have, don't stop. You're on the right path, Leo. I love you, and I'll be back again soon.